A top story this hour, Finance Minister Praveen Gordon has, uh, to a certain extent, heeded President Jacob Zuma's call for a radical economic transformation. The 2017 budget focuses on radical transformation as one of the major, or the measures rather, to achieve sustained economic growth. Gordon says economic power in the country still reflects the entrenched legacy of colonialism and apartheid. Finance Minister lamented that wealth is still produced and allocated along lines that remain fundamentally unjust. However, Treasury Treasury's approach to preferential procurement raises concerns about the department's commitment to transformation. Godan says where large firms are awarded tenders of 30 million rand or more, 30% of the contract value must go to small or black-owned enterprises, but only where feasible. This seems self-defeating as it leaves room for procurement authorities to subjectively decide on contractors' eligibility. Where large firms are awarded tenders of 30 million rand or more, 30% of contract value must go to small or black-owned enterprises where feasible, and procurement authorities are empowered to set targets to promote black-owned and women-owned businesses, particularly for youth and disabled persons and opportunities for rural enterprises and cooperatives. South African suppliers will enjoy preference in respect of goods with significant local content that supporting job creation. Public Procurement Bill will establish a single procurement authority Authority and will consolidate fragmented regulatory environment in keeping with Section 217 of the Constitution. And loss of association and inclusive growth touch many aspects of social organization and economic activity. Renewal and wider participation have to be opened up across as broad a range of industries and social formations as possible. The portfolio of every member of Cabinet, every provincial MEC, and every member of mayoral committees, indeed all councillors, are involved, while responsibilities arise in business, every NGO, and every voluntary association in our communities. And we need to see progress rapidly. There is a growing impatience and ferment amongst our people. Public procurement will amount to 1.5 trillion rands over the next three years. Let me say that a little differently. We will pay about 500 billion rands a year for the delivery of goods and services as government, not transfers or handouts or cash distributions. The purpose is to acquire the infrastructure and operational inputs required for effective service delivery. Public procurement is also an important strategic vehicle for developing local industries, broadening economic participation and creating work opportunities. The economy grew by half a percent in the last financial year. It is projected that it's going to grow by 1.3 percent in this financial year. That is not a good growth of the economy. And therefore, to have an economy that grows at that low rate means that the revenue base is shrinking, is smaller. Now, it makes it very difficult to fulfill all the transformation objectives that we have set. He has uh, uh, mentioned the word transformation repeatedly in the budget. But to allocate resources, he tried his best, but it's not sufficient. From the ACDP side, we believe the minister has very little room to move given the economic environment. And of course, he stuck to his strict fiscal consolidation path. And we see the budget deficit came in at 3.1% of GDP, which we welcome. So we'll take your reaction on the budget speech delivered by Finance Minister earlier on today. Did it redeem the radical economic transformation as called for in the January 8th statement in the State of the Nation address? And uh, the number to dial is 011-542-2186, or you can tweet, uh, like our page on Facebook as well. Clive Ramatibela smith the business editor and anchor of BizPulse for ANN7. And we have our resident political analyst, Fiso Matlango. I almost said, don't mess with mum. And Praveen Gordon seemed don't to have a... my treasury. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, Hello. Ha, la, la. Yeah, man. Jeez. Yeah. You know what? It's very, very interesting, this budget, because we were all talking about mission transformation. Unfortunately, uh, what we realize is how difficult the minister has it to actually effect change. Uh, you know, if you listen to the January 8 statement, for example, uh, President Jacob Zuma talking about what needs to happen, that five, uh, bu 500 billion that needs to go to 30 percent, which needs to be aligned to small or black owned businesses. And we went to the state of the nation address. We were so all excited. And then the budget comes and it's like, Ish. Yeah, uppercut, you know, it's yeah. Like, yeah, sit, sit down. Very difficult. But, but if you put it in context, it is still pretty much 
uh, leaning towards protecting industry or the economy and the status quo because there's that tiny clause that says 30% can go to black owned youth businesses uh, depending on feasibility so whether you're eligible is one thing based on color or race uh, and then the other thing would be your, your technical competence the ability to do the work which is where we've been all along so it entirely it means um, you know we get the big business and then we decide uh, who should get it uh, or who hey, let's call James and the gardener and if he can do it uh, let's give it to James and it's only a small fraction uh, it's fe if feasible or when f when feasible which means if we can if it's uh, upon our margins you know there's there's got to be a code if feasible there's got to be a code to when we make uh, Africans partakers of big business if feasible so I don't know how radical that can be um, I believe uh, radical economic transformation to be a theme that suggests uh, we are going to do it. It's going to be slightly uncomfortable and untidy, but uh, it has to be done. But if we have to still discuss the feasibility of things to happen, then it doesn't seem radical at all. And I do, do, do believe that um, whilst uh, Mr. Gordon had to satisfy investors and satisfy big business, he also had to sort of appease... Um, you know, the, the voter majority. And basically he's given to South Africa the voter majority to say, I'm giving you 30 rand more on the grants. But nowhere have black people become uh, partakers of this economy in terms of mining, in terms of uh, big business, uh, agriculture. Nowhere do they feel particularly um, within. They don't feel uh, integrated. Yeah. In, into this economy. But, but I think in, in, the, in the bigger scheme of things, in, or on a, a larger scale, those that are already participating in this transformation uh, process, the, uh, you know, the round table up here and many others, you'd find it even more increasingly difficult to, to do business. But I suppose the, the advantage is that you're in the system. You know what I mean? In the sense that you may have built a little bit of capacity, you may even have the, the capital to exercise uh, government opportunities. But for the greater majority, that's not the case. Look, um, it's very simple. The reason why BE has failed, the reason why the procurement process has failed, and, and he admits, because when he starts his speech, he goes on to say 95% of the country's wealth belongs to 10% of the population. Um, and that is no guess who that is. Mm -hmm. So I think um, we, we, we are moving forward uh, in a very reversing mode. We, we're not, we're taking Isn't three steps. Yeah, we're taking three steps. What's and, the English word? Exactly. Yeah. So we're taking three steps forward and, and uh, four backwards. So, so and, and you can read into the, into the actual speech itself where they've tried to create and maneuver ways for uh, small to medium enterprises to, to, to participate. And like you're saying, yes, when you are there, it becomes much easier. But what guarantees that that's going to open new industry? Is it going to be the same BE contract, contractor who gets all these 30 percent? You know, it, it, and it can happen. Um, if you've been on the system itself, the, the, the centralized uh, uh, tender procurement process, a, a number of businesses actually, and this is what we were talking about, about regulation. I thought that maybe that would be a addressed here. But we talked about regulation and how difficult and tough for uh, upcoming or smaller um, businesses to actually enter the fray. So if you want to tackle that issue, you would have to cut out red tape. And part of the red tape is to make sure that even those who don't necessarily qualify, these guys, it's their responsibility they get the tender to bring them up and make sure that they train them and get them to the level that they need to. That's the serious problem and the gap that we're missing here. This, um, 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 uh, this we've been sold to it's been sold to us as if it's it's transformation but really what we're seeing is the same black guy the same guy is jabu jabu is the one jabu jabu yeah. gets every tender jabu is the 30 percent it's consistent so <laughs> that's the reason nobody else participates because jabu is the only one with this certificate uh, because he got it because he got the first tender the second tender and now he's qualified he can so there's no entry for new guys to participate in that particular process but, but, but don't we see it in other in boardrooms particularly uh, recycling of the talent and uh, because you tried and tested reputationally acceptable uh, speak the same language and you you, you empower uh, the usual suspects as it were but uh, isn't that perhaps against the model of radical 
economic transformation. Because if it's radical, it's got to gain new frontiers and engage new business. And uh, perhaps skilled or semi-skilled or unskilled, all of those must begin to be partakers of this economy. The, the one thing that, w that was truly amazing is that Mr. Gordon blamed the, the rogue uh, traders for, for, for APSA collusion. And in no way did he come against uh, you know, the banks and said we're going to take drastic action. So in the same way we can, we can acclimatize to say a new kid on the block is always a threat. And so let's rather just block them out and keep this, this, this business very monopolistic. Even if we've got a 10% a in dealing with black people, let's keep the very black people that we've been working with for X number of years. But isn't that what uh, the President Jacob Zuma and even the likes of Mr. Brian Molefe were trying to come against to say, ESCOM cannot have a deal with a contract with one group or one family for 40 years. You know, we need to spread the rent. Mm. You can't have a, a deal of co a contract for 40 years or 30 years with the same organization. The money goes to the same people. The rich continue to get richer. And it seems like, the, you know, the, the, our finance minister was just protecting to say, OK, we're going to increase, you know, the, a, a few number of blacks that are in the game. But the rent has not spread because it is white monopoly capital who who will still decide who those black people are and how to integrate them. That's not radical economic uh, transformation. Mm. Even, you even get high pitched when you talk about this. Oh, 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 Modi from Maritzburg, thanks so much for calling us. Good evening. Mozi? Uh, good evening. Yeah, yes, uh, yes, good evening. Uh, Welcome. Uh, my opinion here, uh, I've watched uh, the uh, budget uh, speech. Uh, from uh, Minister of Finance. But what I would like to say is that if we think that uh, radical change will only come to the finance minister, then we've got a long way to go. Because, uh, you see, on my own opinion, it, it has to start from the ground. It has to start from the municipality. where It is where everything are happening. It is where even the small businesses can be supported. If we don't go there to the ground, because right now, if, if, if uh, most of the things, when I look at the ground there, if those white monopolies, those white businesses, now they are targeting there on the municipalities. It is where you see even the tenders when they're coming out, they are being taken out by the white people. So now, if we don't go there on the ground, if we look at the finance uh, office alone, then this uh, radical change we're talking about will never see this thing. Especially uh, the other thing, it is the businesses that are in, in our location. Uh, most, of our, most of the businesses in our location has been taken by the people from uh, outside. I'm not blaming uh, uh, Africans which are coming from outside South Africa. But if we don't uh, uh, turn back those businesses, then we'll, we will never see this uh, radical change that we're talking about. Because now we as South Africans, we are, we, are, we are totally not involved. In Mose, it's sorry to interrupt you. Very quickly, what industry are you in? Uh, I'm working in the steel industry. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks, thanks yeah. so much for your call, Mozi. And Sammy in, in Guazulanata, hello to you. Hi, ma'am, and how to, hello to your panel. A very good evening to you also and to all the listeners. Good evening. Uh, um, ma'am, you know, I've been listening to the, the panels that you've been bringing in previously, like uh, Professor... Sipo Sepe and, and, and the guys that you've got there. These guys don't have the slightest idea as to what they are talking about. They are How? misleading the entire they're, they're misleading the entire viewers to per, to perceive or to get in a kind of mentality and a manner of thinking which they want, rather than looking holistically at what government is proposing. Now one of your panel members speaks about the bank issues, radical transformation, and so forth. We, we've been quite involved in, in these issues also. But the fact of the matter is, it is just a handful of people that benefit from this. And this is what must be unpacked. And the names are synonymous, whether it's black, Indian, or colored. It is just this group that feeds off it parasitically and has the rubber stamp of the highest office in terms of politics. So that is where the rot starts from and filters right down to the grassroots level. It's not just on the top. 
Okay, and Sammy, term, yeah, sorry, I just want to get for clarity very quickly in terms of corruption aside and, you know, whether the uh, judicial process as well and cover all of that. So we, we read of this uh, particular um, cancer. But I, I just want to come back to where you and I might differ in radical transformation. What is imperative, especially 23 years down the line, in bringing the uh, majority black into the mainstream economy? I don't know if our panelists necessarily have differed from what you're saying. They, they have. They have at a, at, 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 at a, at a large level. How? Your, your panelists are prescribing that uh, there's just a handful of people that feed off it and mm. that engage the, the, the market in terms of government business, which is the honest facts. Mm. And that is because it's a mandate that comes from government. And it's simple for you to look at it. Go and have a look, I, go and have a look at all municipalities. The same contractor that you find in KZN is the one that you'll find in Eastern Cape, the one you'll find in Free State, the one that you'll find in Johannesburg. Uh, if you unpack that and distribute the work, then you'll be able to get into what you guys really want. Or okay, no, I we say agree. We as South African want what we wish to achieve. Sure, I agree. But I right agree. now, the entire thing is in the hands of just a minority few. And your panels, your... your the people that you bring on your panels, even Professor C.P., I had great respect for him. I've attended a lot of his conferences, but he seems to have lost his political compass somewhere along the line, including the members that you have got there right now. All right. I suggest you pick it up with the Professor C.P. when you next meet. Uh, Sammy, what business are you in? We're involved in civils, man. In? Civil. Oh, civil engineering. Yes. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, Thank any success you. with government business? <coughs> Sorry? Have you had any success with government uh, in terms of business? Absolutely not. Okay. Sammy, we're going to leave it there. And I think that's the frustration of uh, small, medium enterprises that have the passion, the comp capacity, and want to contribute to a more inclusive economy. You, you get that red tape, as you were talking about. There are gatekeepers, uh, and opportunities only seem to be going to, to the usual suspects. I think I, I don't understand why Sammy says he disagrees with us, but I think he's more agreeing with us <laughs> than anything else. But nonetheless, I mean, you know, when you talk about radical transformation, there's a number of factors that you need to take into play and I really must say and this is out of the bottom of my heart and love for uh, uh, finance minister very difficult budget to work with very critical uh, important that you convince everybody we've just convinced the rating agencies that they are happy and they've allowed us another six months the RAND has picked up quite a number uh, quite a momentum the stock market is doing well. The economy, the data that we're getting is seemingly also very positive. Uh, we've seen that with the jobs numbers coming uh, slightly, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the unemployment rate going down a little bit, inflation going down a little bit. So there are positive aspects of our economy and it shows that we're moving. And has the reason that the, the, the speech starts off with a negative uh, uh, tone, but starts to go in and says, no, look, there's, there's possibilities of things that need to happen. But my biggest problem, and uh, this is why I said the challenge was, is he going to address transformation? Unfortunately, I feel the speech was, um, it was repeating the same old things. In, uh, it's, uh, it's, like a, it's like somehow a polished you know, uh, shoe, not necessarily new things, but just simply brushed off and made a little bit cleaner. So that's what I felt. But the budget, the content itself, without looking at transformation, if you strip out transformation out of the budget, the budget is brilliant. The budget is hit, it's, it's hard on the nail. It's, 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 it's things that you expect the finance minister to do uh, to control uh, the public purse. But it does not, unfortunately, address the issue of transformation. Mm. Uh, it's Mose was also highlighting the fact of, you know, uh, this being more effective in, in terms of transformation it has to start from the base which is at municipal level uh, and I can tell you from experience that it tends out to be that you have a greater chance of winning the lottery than getting business from municipality because it is a numbers game so whoever comes in the cheapest and if you again don't have the means of production or you don't own that industry in terms of the goods that you, you're trying to, to sell to, to government, you still have to go to the big suppliers yes, who yeah. themselves have got their own stringent, uh, rigorous terms that make it very difficult to participate. We, we still haven't moved from still, uh, still that, haven't that particular moved. narrative. Yeah. Uh, Clive is going to trend now. 
uh, Clive Ram Ramatibela Smith calls uh, Mr. Gordon's speech a polished shoe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the reality of what the, the caller was raising is, um, is true to a, to a degree. Although I, I wish he'd stay long, I was going to give him Professor Siepe's number so they can go back in terms and speak. But the reality of the, of, of the matter is it's not just at municipal level. Uh, a speech is one thing, but uh, execution is another. And the president can, can, can speak and declare at January 8 or at the State of the Nation address to say in the year of Oliver Tambo, uh, you know, South Africa is going to, to enforce uh, radical economic transformation. But it is then up to the ministers to make sure that it trickles down to the man and the woman on the street. Not just the ministers, this has got to go down to the premiers, down to the mayors. But, and, and, and that's the thing that he's, he's highlighting. But the reality of the matter is even Mr. Gordon must then do the same. If his president, who has uh, deployed him to this position, says this is the year of radical economic transformation, his budget should have aligned itself to radical economic transformation, which I, which I don't think it has. Did he have the political maneuver, uh, space to maneuver, though? He did. In, 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 in this sense, indeed. wonderfully, he says, you know, we've given licenses to, to three new banks. You know, one of those banks is the, the, the post office bank. You know, and for all good and, uh, good, and, good and sense, the post office has got a license. But a license is a piece of paper, one that can be revoked the day after tomorrow. Is Mr. Gordon going to attach the funds? Is he going to make sure that policy agrees with it? Is he, going, is he ready to navigate Treasury's business to convince the ministers, the cabinet ministers and departments to direct this business to... Yeah. To, to, See, so to, I, to I hate to, to interrupt you. We're out of time, but just the two things that Mozi raised: the lack of protection that we we've lost the Kasi economics. You know, it's taken over by other nationals, uh, and and also the open tender process. That if we see there is a replication of the same companies, you have the right to go and inquire why your bid was not successful, and if you're not satisfied, you can then elevate that particular. They concept. call it the Makure tender. Makura. Makura. Makura tender. Only you would know. Yeah, of course, because I was there when it was launched. Yeah. And, you know, they, these are all the efforts of trying to uh, get other guys participating. The problem that we have, and I'm, I'm dead serious, this, is, this must be looked at. The, the policies that we adapt, and, and that's the reason why the president had to wait with the FICA bill, because it could have easily have again, marginalized a lot of people without actually us going through it and scrutinizing it. So now let's talk about that particular open tender. It's fantastic. It's great. But it doesn't systematically change who qualifies for that particular tender. So what happens is you'll see the same old guys and some of them don't even participate. By the way, what they don't tell you is once it goes to open tender, these big guys don't actually participate because they're like, no, why? Why should we participate? And that's what uh, uh, Premier Makura was saying. So let's talk about the guys that do actually apply and go on there. You'll see the same guys because fundamentally at the back, they don't have the kind of qualification, the requirements. They don't have. You need to have a budget that allows those people to not partner on a 30 percent basis. They need to be they need to be inculcated into the business so that they can stand on their own two feet. That's how you'd make radical transformation. You make it a, a, a must that they do it. I'll give you a quick example with China. In China, if you want to do business with government, if you do not have 51 percent stake that belongs to people or or anybody who belongs in China, you cannot do business with the state. So it should be mandatory, and, and as opposed to the feasibility. Just very quickly to give Suso the last word, um, the uh, the Gassi economics that Muzi was saying, Uti, there needs to be a level of protection uh, protection for local uh, in, in, in the business. Do you think that horse has bolted that we've lost that economy, and you know we need to look at other industries? I don't think we've lost that economy. Um, the Gassi economy is a very robust economy, and I don't know why we overlook, you know, the barber shop at the corner, the lady that makes food at the spaza, you know, why we, you know, the young man that sells airtime or sells fruit by the side of the road. A financial inclusion needs to happen and it needs to happen now. And I think that's the, the one of the model 
pieces of radical economic transformation. It needs to trickle down to the masses so that they become partakers of this economy. If you do that, it will still be the, the big boys, the vanguards, who've always monopolized the game, only running it themselves. It needs to come down. Yeah, I'm putting my hand up. I'm available for any consortiums <laughs> and BE structures. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a member in good standing. Like That's a nice start. <laughs> yeah, no.